Okay, so let's make some media. We're going to make something called McConkie's auger. It says on the label 50 grams in a liter. We're going to make 500 mils. So that means we're going to use 25 grams. So you take out your layboat. Get your spatula and you weigh out 50 grams or 25 grams. I'm going to be cavalier and weigh it like this because it's just the kind of hairpin I am. That's a 1920s, 30s expression. You can wow your friends at the bar if they ever open. So this is, again, auger is already in it. And this is not quantitative analysis. Notice it says 26 grams. Oh, it says 26 grams. It's supposed to be 25. Who cares? It's going to be close enough. You don't want to have huge, vast differences, but that's going to be just fine. Don't worry about that. Now you need a nice flask. I'm using a one liter Erlenmeyer flask to put this in. I'm making 500 mils of, of, of media overall, ultimately. What you want to do is always use a volume of flask that's twice as big as the final volume you're going to make. So we're only going to make 500 mils. That's good. You wouldn't want to put a whole thousand in this puppy because when it's in the autoclave under heat and pressure, it'll likely bubble over the top. So rule of thumb, th thumb is twice the volume um, of get, get, a, get a container that's twice the volume of what you're going to make. Okay, So, we're going to go ahead and stick this stuff in there. Now, because there's auger in here already, it will not dissolve until it's heated up. So what you could do is put a stir bar in this, let it spin around all this, and we'll show you this later when we make a more complex media maybe as, a, as an adjunct to this. Um, but we're not going to do that because all we're going to do is add water, shake it up a little bit, put some aluminum foil on here, and autoclave it. So, what kind of water do you use? Well, you've got to use a special kind of water. Not special, but you want to use water that is actually pure water, good water. So in our case, we use, and you would use if you make media yourself, the water that comes out of these gray spigots. This is nice and clean. And again, you should, of course, make sure this is exactly um, at 500. And in fact, the powder, of course, takes up room. But this is microbiology, not quantitative analysis. And so as long as you are about 500 and you got about 25 grams, you're okay. There's sometimes there's media that's really important to be super, super anal, but this isn't one of them, okay? I'll show you one that's more like that later, if you're so inclined. So now, we just go ahead and pour this into our little flask. Ooh, pretty color. I want you to find out what McConkie's auger is, who it's for, and uh, why it's so useful for us, and what kind of type of media it is. So again, you see a big clump of media. Don't worry. You just shake it around a little bit. On the bottle it says boil it and dissolve it, and then autoclave it. I've never done that in my entire life. With these prepared media, I just shake them up. They're not going to dissolve. Um, even if there's little bits on the side, doesn't matter. We put this in the autoclave, hot temperature and all that pressure, everything will dissolve just fine in here. But you can see this guy is a pretty color medium. That means something's in it. Hmm, I wonder what. I wonder why it's so useful. Hmm. Okay, so we've got to put a cover on top of this. You can put a, uh, a um, beaker on top of that if you wanted. 
Um, what I tend to do is try to find some aluminum foil. You can use cotton, you can use all kinds of things. There are special closures made specifically for it, but I tend to use aluminum foil. But you have to, this is hard to do with a camera strapped to your chest. Okay. So I take a piece of aluminum foil, fold it over so it's double about, pop it on the top. And now this is ready to be autoclaved. Okay. One more thing you gotta do though. Just like we label plates, you gotta label this. How do you label it? Follow me. So, there is this stuff called autoclave tape. Um, so, this is autoclave tape, very expensive stuff. But what it does, it's got, if you look carefully, it's got, you can't see it on here, but it's got writing on it, it even says autoclaved. I wonder if you can see that. It says autoclaved. So what you do is you take a little piece of it, bend over the edge so that you can have a tab to grab later and you just stick this someplace on the flask um, i tend to put it either on the tippy top like this or i'll put it on the edge something and then i'm going to label that again with mcconkey's auger here's a pen i'm going to label that with mcconkey's auger my name the date oops 8 12 20. um and then we'll go and autoclave it now i'm going to show you how to do it and then i'll do it later but to, and what's going to happen with this autoclave tape is under the pressure and everything of the autoclave and the temperature this will change black and you'll see the words autoclave on there that'll mean this thing actually autoclaves and is sterile if you pull it out and there's no change, that means something's wrong with the autoclave and this stuff is likely not sterile and you do not want to use it. You tell me or you tell Steve or Julie and we fix the autoclave. Um, so anyway, but autoclaves, what are they? They are basically, i put some of the stuff back before I get yelled at. They are basically um, big pressure cookers. That's really all they are. And We've got a couple different flavors, and I'll show you. Let's so put this stuff back. Got a couple different flavors. We've got a little one that I usually use often, which is kind of like what you'd find in a dental office. Um, let me get this thing adjusted. That is right here. See that? Okay. That is. An autoclave it's a chamber you fill this with water up to a certain level um, can't see in there. you fill this to water a certain level put your materials inside you use the door handle here pull this thing closed and latch it shut like so and then you use these controls up here this one if you can see it that's pressure so that's going to go up um, in pressure um, and then this is temperature and temperature is going to go to um, a high temperature That combination is going to basically give you, because of the pressure, uh, water that boils at like 120 degrees as opposed to boiling at 100 degrees C. And this is just a timer. So you turn the timer, fire this thing up, and you come back later, and it's all autoclaved. All sterile. Okay, so we got our little McConkies in there. I got water in here. Water just goes into the lip under here. You can hear there's water in there. You just don't want it going up over to this top piece, but hold on. There's a little lip right here, and the water just comes up just below it. My fingers are just getting wet when I put, put them down there, okay? Um, so, got everything in there. Now, just so that we're uh, on the same page here, one thing you have to do is you have to adjust the machine right. So first you close the door, 
<laughs> now, up here, this is taped over, but there's two modes for this thing. There's what's called slow liquids, which is over here by my finger, slow and fast. You want these on slow if you're doing liquid. Now, this is always over like this so that everybody always leaves this particular autoclave on slow for liquids. What that's going to do is make it so this sucker exhausts slowly. If you got liquids and the exhaust under pressure suddenly goes boom, all your liquid's going to shoot out of your, out of your, your flasks, okay? Which makes sense. So you always have it on slow exhaust. If you're autoclaving um, forceps, razor blades, uh, petri dishes, whatever, um, then, uh, glass petri dishes, by the way, um, you know, then you can use fast exhaust. So, so, so utensils and things, fast is okay. Liquids, always on slow. Then you got a timer, and in general, it's 20 minutes per liter. I'm going to put this on 20, even though I only got 500 mils in there. And then we just let it go, and it'll come out later, and we'll have sterile McConkies.